Poetry is therapy. It's terribly good. <laughs> so I'm still writing it. Um, OK, so um, at the last reunion, though, a couple of reunions ago, because we still have them since my mum died, but only half of the family, the half that still like each other. And uh, so we had another reunion, and I spoke to my sister. She said, what are you working on at the moment? I said, I'm writing some poems about mum, and it's really helping me. And uh, I really feel like I'm coming to some kind of acceptance about her death. And when I said that word, her eyes filled with tears, and she had to go for a very long walk. And, uh, and then I, I came back from that reunion, and I wrote this for my sister. Missing. Someone loved went missing and the town caved in. Waiters stormed from restaurants, ladies drank gin, neaters folded handkerchiefs before they filled the street and crumpled into lily blossoms littered at half feet. Diaries were emptied, people took the stairs, and no one dared to breathe the air in case it wasn't theirs. Teachers cried in staff rooms, doctors took to bed, telephones were rung from walls, letters lay unread. And all the life we couldn't stand was swallowed like a pill, a town called acceptance, population nil. Someone loved went missing and the shop front shut, flowered with graffiti exposing its butt, so we couldn't buy a paper and wouldn't want to read a thousand other towns like ours had not been so bereaved. No one's loss as big as ours, no one's as keen, and no one that we recognised where once our love had been, and no one cared what happened next, so everyone went home. Women turned to water, men turned to stone, siblings turned to alcohol and wearing out their shoes, a town called Acceptance, home of the blues. Someone loved went missing and the night stayed black. Constellations circled round the sky untracked. The moon built up and melted, a candle in the neck of all our bottled emptiness. What could we expect but sobbing from the children's rooms, the dissonance of loss, its sorrow drifting sorry miles across the fields of frost. And very little else was heard. Mothers wept alone, silence wrapped like bandages around the wounded homes whose sleep was broken up by ghosts or endless hours awake. A town called acceptance, rumour or fake. Someone loved went missing and we learned to endure. The glass fronts of our porches looking faintly insecure and frightened of the gentle chink as midnight lifts the latch. The word is always missing, as if they, as if they might be back. But we're the ones left missing, with bits of us locked off or not at home or shut up with the photos in the loft. The key is on the inside. The coat is on the rack. You only have to see that there's no art to wearing black and step into the clueless light of ever-burning sun. A town called acceptance, population one. <laughs> Okay, uh, and I'm going to end with the title poem, Somewhere There Is One, and it's my mother's. And I got this at the launch of my book in Brighton. My ex-sister-in-law came all the way over from Bradford-on-Avon and said, I've got one of your mother's handkerchiefs. She left it at my house years ago. So I've actually got one of my mum's actual hankies here. So this is about my mum's hankies. This is what I'm going to end with. Thank you very much for listening. Material. My mother was the hanky queen. When hanky meant a thing of cloth, not paper tissues bought in packs from late night garages and shops, but things for waving out of trains and mopping the corners of your grief. When hankies were material, she'd have one always up her sleeve. Tucked in the wrist of every cardi, a mum's embarrassment of lace embroidered with a V for Viv spittled and scrubbed against my face and sometimes more than one fell out as if she had a farm up there where dried up hankies fell in love and mated raising little squares. <laughs> she bought her own. I never did. Hankies were presents from distant aunts in boxed sets with transparent covers and script initials spelling ponce, the naffest Christmas gift you'd get. My brothers too, more often than not, got male ones, serious and grey and larger, like they had more snot. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was hankies that closed department stores with headscarves, girdles, knitting wool and trouser presses, homely props you'd never find today in malls. Hankies which demanded irons and boiling to be purified shuttered the doors of family stores when those who used to buy them died. And somehow, with the hankies loss, greengrocer George, with a dodgy foot delivering veg from a comma van, is history and the friendly butcher who'd slip an extra sausage in the fishmonger whose marble slab of haddock smoked the colour of yolk and local ro and parcel <coughs> rows of local crab lay opposite the dancing school where mrs white with painted talons taught us when you're smiling from a stumbling out of tune piano step together step together step together point the annual talent show when every mother fencing tears would whip a hanky from their sleeve and smudge the rouge from little dears. <laughs> Nostalgia only makes me old. The innocence I want my brood to cling on to like ten bob notes was killed in TV's lassitude and it was me who turned it on to buy the time to write this poem and eat bought biscuits I would bake if I'd commit to being home. There's never a hanky up my sleeve. I raised neglected looking kids, the kind whose noses strangers clean. <laughs> what awkwardness in me forbids me to keep some tissues in my bag when handy packs are 50p. I miss material handkerchiefs, their soft and hidden history, but it isn't mine. I'll let it go. My mother too, eventually, who died not leaving handkerchiefs, apart from this one, but tissues and uncertainty, and she would say, should I complain of the scratchy and disposable, that this is your material to do with, daughter, what you will. Mm -hmm.